Wait, we had arranged it <laughs> here. How did Janikowski get under the weather? Oh, I got a key to get out there. Maybe I can find it when I get back. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Is Senate Point giving a presentation tonight? It's all set up. Will you? Senate Point giving a presentation Uh, I don't know. I know they were supposed to last night. I don't see you here. Well, good. We can take it after the first of the year. Hmm? Oh, you? Here. Sorry, I missed your thing. Oh, God. I'm ready. Still time. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the City of Joliet Council meeting for December 18th, 2012. We have the invocation will be given this evening by Mr. Jim Howard, the Director of the Community Economic Development, after which he will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thanks. Thank you, Council Members. Lord, let us pray for the grieving families in Connecticut and for all other families who have lost loved ones through tragic circumstances, we a offer a moment of silence for their losses. Thank you very much. During the holiday, we celebrate the birth of the Son of God. Lord, we thank you for his sacrifice and remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Also, Lord, we ask for your blessings on our leaders. We pray that their decisions are helpful for all of the citizens and that they serve your purpose for all of us. Finally, Lord, we ask that this Christmas spirit of peace, compassion, and understanding continue throughout the rest of the year, and a God bless to all. Amen. 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 I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thanks, Reverend. Thanks, uh, Jim. Excuse me, the sign. Here. 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 Microphone. Microphone. Is your microphone on? Thanks, Tom. Is there a motion that the minutes of the pre council meeting held on December 3rd and the regular meeting held on December 4th stand as recorded? So moved. Second. Kristen. Motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Fisher? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilman Quillman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Mayor Durrani? Aye. Motion carried. Next, appointment of Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a motion to appoint Councilman Odekirk to serve as Mayor Pro Tem January 1st through March 30th, 2012? So second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Fisher? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug. I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Barber. Aye. Mayor Durrani. Aye. Motion carried. Next, Council Committee reports. Communication Technology and Information Services. Nothing to report. No report? No. Well, Mr. Ben, Mr. I may. Uh, go ahead, Councilwoman. We did meet yesterday, and uh, we went over the, uh, oh, what do you call it, the checklist for uh, things that needed to be fixed here in the city council chambers, and um, Scott can sell it. Is Scott here this evening? He is. Scott gave us a short presentation, and we'll let him uh, report briefly on the website and um, other things that we're working on at this point. Sorry, Mayor, members of council, the CTS media, uh, committee met yesterday afternoon uh, and we discussed <coughs> several items, including the council chamber's update. And, uh, every, you know, basically we discussed uh, some of the punch list items and the, you know, for the, the room in here as well as you know, stuff on the website. We also discussed three capital projects that are before you this evening on your agenda. The automatic vehicle location tracking system, council number Council mem uh, memo number 
56212, uh, the Managed PC Replacement Program, Council Amendment Number 560-12, and the renewal of the IT Support Services Contracts, Council Memo Number 55912. Those are three programs that were discussed at length with the committee. Uh, we got unanimous uh, support for those uh, for consideration tonight and uh, recommendation for approval. And also, <clears throat> we had some feedback from the folks that are working on that, and it's doing, it's lightening the load a little bit, and then we're getting further, and then you want to talk about the extra computers as well. Sure. So the Managed PC Replacement Program is a program that I introduced that will help bring uh, adequate PCs to all the staff and all departments. Over a five-year period, we're planning to turn about 20% of the assets over every year so that we can make sure that people have the tools they need to do their job. This will be, uh, you know, kind of a new, a new program for the city. Today we have 425 computers in use throughout the city. More than half or about half of them are more than five years old. Some are more than 10 years old. And so what happens is that people become, you know, very, uh, it, it hurts the way they do their job. They can't be productive. There's a lot more problems that have to be solved and, and this program will allow us to uh, uh, basically give them the tools they need to better do their job. Uh, we also were able to uh, consider the whole fleet of PCs, the 425 of them, and bid that out to three different vendors. And we ended up achieving a 20% reduction in cost on all of our PCs as a result of that. So we're asking for <coughs> more support tonight to uh, support 20% uh, of the PCs being turned over year over year starting this year. Uh, it's a $90,000 a year program. $450,000 over the next five years. Thanks, Scott. Anything else? <clears throat> Thank you. <coughs> finance Committee report. Your Honor, the Finance Committee uh, met at 545 this evening in the, uh, in the conference room right here next to the council chambers to review the uh, committee's comprised of uh, Council, Councilman uh, Hug, Councilman Girl, and myself. Also present was Councilman Morris and Councilwoman Quillman. Um, we approved uh, the minutes for the regular meeting of September 18th and November 20th. <coughs> discussed the uh, 2012 tax levy ordinances, which were discussed yesterday. Uh, the f we reviewed the financial report. Uh, staff had estimated a $400,000 surplus through the end of November. It actually, uh, <coughs> through the end of November, has turned out to be about a $600 surplus in the operating fund, which is good news. <coughs> if you the personnel summary, the Neighborhood Improvement Program, which is the last report, which is basically nothing because uh, the money is now, the few thousand dollars will be transferred into the uh, general fund. If you the conference travel and seminar expense report, treasurer's disbursements and regular claims found them all to be in order and recommend their approval. Thank you. Public Safety Committee report. <clears throat> uh, yes, Your Honor, the uh, Public Safety Committee met uh, this evening at 6 o'clock in uh, the uh, board chambers. Uh, items that were discussed, uh, the, the, actually the committee uh, consists of myself, Councilman Odekirk, and Councilman Morris. Uh, Councilman Quillman and Councilman Hug were also in attendance. Uh, the items that were discussed, uh, we discussed the purchase of a second uh, fire engine. Um, we purchased maybe two or three months ago, I believe it was, a, uh, a fire engine. Um, the uh, Chief Form Hall uh, informed us, and we had actually talked about it a couple months ago, and it is in the 2013 capital improvement or capital budget of acquiring uh, an additional fire engine. Um, this fire engine uh, retails for $477,000. However, we were able to achieve an approximate $40,000 savings uh, due to the fact that we've already purchased one and they're both going to be going in for detailing at the same time. Um, and again, this is in our 2013, budgeted in our 2013 uh, capital budget. Uh, that, uh, that item is on our agenda tonight and it's item uh, five, Council Memo 561-12. Uh, in addition, uh, we talked about, uh, we discussed the purchase of a replacement tornado siren in, at Station 8. Uh, um, the uh, siren, this replacement of the uh, uh, tornado siren 
is Council Number 571-12. It's on our agenda tonight. The uh, siren uh, cost the city about $26,000. The reason for the replacement is that the siren was installed in 1989 and basically has significant wear and tear uh, on it. Um, we also discussed the uh, purchase, the uh, Chief of Police, uh, Mike Traffin, discussed purchase of tasers. Uh, we're going to be purchasing 31 tasers. Um, after this purchase, uh, the chief informed us that uh, every officer uh, will have a taser. The chief also mentioned to us, uh, to the committee, that uh, uh, having all the officers with tasers saves lives. Not only officers' lives, um, but also the uh, perpetrators' lives and some of the situations that they go into where they don't have to use deadly force where they may have had to without a taser. So the uh, committee unanimously supported this. Um, it is on our agenda tonight, uh, Council Member 563-12. Um, uh, the uh, purchase of the tasers is going to be covered by a federal grant, at least everything with the exception of $6,000, which is budgeted for uh, in the corporate fund. Uh, the last item that we discussed was an item with Chief Formhall as it relates to a new fire list and possibly some new requirements. Um, this item is going to be brought back to the uh, Finance Committee, or sorry, to the Public Safety Committee. Um, after uh, uh, Chief Formhall gave us some reading material. But one of the items that was discussed was um, requiring that new firefighters uh, be certified paramedics prior to their hire. Um, the chief explained to us that this could save the uh, city of Joliet possibly between thirty-five and $40,000 by having uh, firefighters certified as paramedics. Um, nothing has been decided. It's uh, up for uh, further discussion on the uh, safety committee, but it was brought up and we do have some information to read through. And that concludes my report. Uh, Councilman, the first two items, did you take a position on that? I know you mentioned the tasers, you voted unanimously. We sure did. That you did? We approved it. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Public Service Committee report. Mayor, the Public Service Committee comprised of <coughs> Councilwoman Barber, Councilman Fisher, and myself met down in the planning room uh, at 7.15 this morning to review the contracts, change orders, pay estimates, final payments found to all to be in order and recommend their approval. There's a request to move up the proclamation for this evening. The proclamation is declaring the week of January 1st, 2013 as Smoke Free Illinois Week. Jenny Blair with the Will County Health Department is here to accept the award. Tell the rest of the folks watching, the irony's not lost on me. I'm the only smoker. But I do have a smoker. I smoke around my family, and I encourage people to quit. Yeah, so my parents are or family are encouraging me, or at least not do it around other folks. I'm an ex-smoker, so I know how you feel. It's a it's a struggle. Yes. Now I will read the proclamation for you. Whereas secondhand smoke is a major health hazard and whereas there is no risk-free level of exposure to secondhand smoke, and whereas approximately 50,000 deaths each year are attributable to secondhand smoke exposure, according to the U.S. Surgeon General, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and the National Cancer Institute, and whereas separate areas, air cleaning or ventilation does not eliminate exposure to secondhand smoke, and whereas smoke-free policies are the most economic and effective protection from exposure to secondhand smoke, and whereas smoke-free laws provide immediate health benefits, most notably a decline in heart attack hospitalizations, and whereas the Smoke-Free Illinois Act is celebrating its five-year anniversary on January 1st, 2013, and whereas the Smoke-Free Illinois Act protects all citizens regardless of where they work or play, now therefore, I, Thomas Durrani, Mayor of the City of Joliet, on behalf of the <coughs> Joliet City Council, do hereby proclaim the week of January 1st, 2013, Smoke-Free Illinois Week in Joliet to remind the public about the benefits of protecting everyone from the health risks associated with secondhand smoke and the importance of prohibiting smoking in all public places and workplaces. Signed, Mayor Thomas Durrani. <laughs> all the rest of the smokers like myself just quit and we won't have to deal with this anymore, right? <laughs> Mayor? Yes. Um, if we could go back just a minute to public safety, we 
Bob and I were supposed to make a comment after uh, about the public safety meeting about uh, the truck traffic mm -hmm. that we've been receiving lots of phone calls on. Okay. And um, <clears throat> myself and, and Mr. Oderkirk have received many phone calls. So I, we do have an ordinance in place, but it's not uh, a strict ordinance. So I ran it by uh, our attorney, Mr. Plyman, and then uh, Chief Trafton did some more research on it and uh, also Mike Botsum and they, they gave us a map and they showed us the truck routes and lots of these 18 wheelers are going through our residential neighborhoods and it's very hard to enforce right now and because you, you put a truck sign up and then they go down another street and it just seems to uh, exacerbate the situation. So um, Chief is going to look into it further and um, there's some device that possibly could go into effect and he's going to look at this and bring it back to the public safety. I, you said January, John? Yes. Yeah, back in January. So they'll probably eliminate a lot of that uh, truck traffic, not only in the residential neighborhoods, but also down in 53 and around by Center Point where these trucks that are overweight are trying to bypass everything. and. It's a matter of public safety, so um, I appreciate John putting it on the agenda, and I know Mike and um, Mike and Mike, Chief, Mike, <laughs> and we put a lot of work into looking at that. So um, just let the citizens know we are working on it. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. No, no, I'll just, okay. say All right. uh, just having been a smoker and having tried to quit three times, one time for a year, and went back. I know how tough it is, but it's been 26 years for me, so you'll feel a lot better, Krista. <laughs> Next is agenda items and reports. Council Memo 546-12 was approved at yesterday's pre-council meeting. Next is the Treasurer's Report for October 2012. It is recommended this report be received and placed on file. So moved. Second. It's been, it's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odeker. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Councilman Fisher. Aye. Mayor Durrani. Aye. Under ordinances and resolutions, Council Memo 547-12, an ordinance approving an intergovernmental agreement with Joliet School District 86 requesting the transfer of certain real property and a resolution approving an agreement for the development of an early learning center at 500 Parks Avenue. It is recommended said ordinance and resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Second. Questions? <coughs> Mr. Mayor, members sure. of the Council, uh, Mr. McHugh is present. If you'd like to say a few words to the Council on behalf of uh, One Hope United. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, thank you for considering this project uh, and for giving me a couple of minutes to uh, talk about One Hope United. Uh, we're a 117-year-old uh, nonprofit organization here in Illinois uh, and provide a wide variety of services, uh, foster care, counseling, uh, programs to keep youth um, out of uh, the detention system, uh, and early childhood education in a pretty significant way. Um, in fact, we, uh, for, the for the past 15 years or so, we've, provided, we've had an office in Joliet uh, doing foster care work here. Um, this is really going to be a great addition to uh, the community. Um, we're, our proposal uh, will create uh, an early education center for um, a little more than 200 kids uh, at the former Park School. Uh, this will be a, a renovation, of course, uh, and um, uh, we'll be serving children ages uh, birth through uh, age five on a full-time basis and as well as an after-school program for kids who are six to 12 years old. Um, Joliet, uh, in particular, is a very high need for child care services for low-income families uh, and is why uh, we <coughs> chose to propose a program um, here in this city. Um, you may remember I was here a year ago in September when we first submitted the application uh, to the state of Illinois for a grant, a capital grant for this purpose. And um, about two weeks ago, we were notified um, that we were awarded um, a grant of $3.1 million. Um, and in fact, the governor is going to announce the entire um, early childhood capital grant program uh, tomorrow in Cicero. I'll, I'll be present and have an opportunity to speak at that um, event and mention this project as well. Um, the entire cost of the project will probably be about a um, million dollars more than that grant. Um, it's our uh, intention and in fact we've begun uh, the fundraising efforts to uh, make up the difference. Um, we'll use that and or financing to make that happen. Um, and once this process is finished here then we'll complete our board process and 
um, hopefully get things going, well, certainly as soon as possible. Um, be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Mayor. Sure. What, what's your timetable uh, on the development part of it? You know, these, um, we, we've done a number of development projects over the years. Um, the whole project, a, whole, a project like this will typically take um, about two years to complete. So um, maybe two years from this coming spring, if we're fortunate, maybe we'll be able to open the fall prior to that. That's uh, approximate. Just a comment. Thank you for uh, selecting Joliet. I think it's a, it's a great reuse of a, a wonderful historic school on the east side of Joliet, and it's going to going to bring new life to that whole neighborhood and uh, thank you to Alfredo Malesio. I remember Alfredo when you first spoke about uh, this possible project and you were looking for pos alternative sites where it could work and uh, it seems like a perfect fit for for both your program and for the city of Joliet so congratulations. Thank you very much and Alfredo really has been a great partner throughout this process. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. In motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Hogg? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Just a quick comment. As a member of the original Quality <coughs> Life Task Force for Districts 4 and 5, and Alfredo was part of that as well, this is one of the key objectives, and it's, it's, it's wonderful to finally see it come into fruition. So thank you very much for doing this, and I'll vote aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Fisher? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Mayor Gerani? Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 548-12, ordinance approving a vacation of a seven foot by 16 foot portion of a 10 foot wide public utility and drainage easement located at 103 Barney Drive. It is recommended said ordinance be denied. So moved. Second. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Mr. and Mrs. Rodriguez are present this evening. Uh, if I don't know if they would like to address the council, but it would be appropriate if they wanted to do that, that this would be the time. I think it's, it looks like they're here to hear the vote. So just so I'm clear, uh, the motion is to deny? That is correct. Our recommendation is consistent with that of the plan commission, and it's to recommend uh, denial of the uh, vacation of the utility and drainage easement in the rear yard. Mayor? Yes. Tom, it says ordinance approving <clears throat> a vacation. The recommendation is to deny, but the ordinance is worded that we're voting whether to approve it or not. I, I can respond to that. Um, traditionally, when uh, council items are presented to the council where uh, there is a denial recommendation, it's always possible that the council would disagree with the recommendation and would proceed with an approval. In that event, we need an approval document. You really don't need a denial document. So there's always an ordinance or some sort of uh, uh, approval document on the chance that there would be an approval. Just so I'm clear, so I know I'm voting. Are we voting? Does an I vote mean that you're voting to approve the ordinance? No. Or an I vote mean that you're voting to deny the ordinance? The motion was to deny. An I vote would concur in the motion and would be a vote to deny. Thank you. Excuse me. What you, my, mine says the recommendation of the administration is to deny. No, but the, the title of it is ordinance approving a variation. But the ordinance is approving it. That that's, okay. was the reason for my question. I wanted to make sure that the motion wasn't in the affirmative. It's basically to deny. So an I vote is to deny. Right. I think it's the um, the agenda, the green agenda that has, and it will be on your iPads um, as an ordinance approving. That should be. Uh, well, there, our recommendation is clearly to deny the request for the vacation of the okay. easement. So we'll clarify that in the future so we can indicate uh, what the recommendation is on this type of a situation. Thank you, Krista. It's in motion and seconded to deny. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilman Coleman? I just want to comment for the record for the folks that weren't here yesterday. Um, we did discuss this at length, and because this was done without a permit and any inspections, uh, you could have saved yourself a lot of grief knowing in the beginning that you weren't able to uh, build such a structure on an easement. So. Uh, for those reasons, I have to vote um, aye to deny. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Fisher? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Mayor Gerani? Aye. Motion denied. 
Council Memo 549-12, ordinance approving a variation of use to allow continuation of a two unit residence and a single family residence, an R4 multifamily residential use in an R2 single family residential district located at 419-14, I'm sorry, 1419-1421 East Washington Street. It is recommended said ordinance be adopted. So moved. Second. Questions? Krista? It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilman <coughs> Barber? Aye. Councilman Fisher? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Mayor Durrani? Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 550-12, ordinance declaring certain properties as public nuisances. It is recommended said ordinance be adopted. So moved. Second. <coughs> Krista. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Fisher? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Mayor Durrani? Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 551-12, an ordinance for the levying and assessment of taxes for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2012 and ending December 30. First, 2012, in and for the city of Joliet, including the Joliet Public Library. It is recommended said ordinance be adopted. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, comments, Tim? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is the uh, official ordinance that levies real estate taxes. It's consistent with the budget that the mayor and city council approved at our last city council meeting. Uh, it does not raise the uh, <clears throat> total amount of the tax levy from where it was last year. It's uh, the same as last year. Thank you. Motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Fisher? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Mayor Durrani? Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 552-12, ordinances for the levy and assessment of taxes for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2012 and ending December 31st, 2012, in and for the 1994 Joliet Special Service Area No. 1 Joliet Commons Shopping Center Project the 1996 Joliet Special Service Area No. 14, Joliet City Center, and 2009 Joliet Special Service Area No. 7, Park Hill Subdivision. It is recommended said ordinances be adopted. So moved. Second. Any questions, <coughs> questions comments? This was uh, reviewed in depth yesterday. Any questions? <coughs> It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Barber? Aye. Councilman Fisher? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Odekirk? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Mayor Durrani? Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> Council Memo 499-12, Ordinance Approving Amendment to Chapter 7 Bicycles, Chapter 17 Junk and Secondhand Dealers, Chapter 18 Article 5 Pawnbrokers and Article 1 Fees of the Joliet Code of Ordinances and Creating New Regulations for Antique Dealers, Itinerant Merchants, Junk Dealers, Junk Peddlers, Pawnbrokers and Secondhand Dealers and to enter into an agreement with Leads Online for the online tracking software. It is recommended that ordinance be tabled. Move. Mayor, before yes. we table, I have a couple questions. Sure. How did that meeting go? I was not able to make that. It, it was a productive meeting. Uh, the revised ordinance will be submitted to uh, all of the people that are affected by it, and they'll have another opportunity to comment on it. And what I would recommend is not necessarily tabling it to a specific meeting. What we'll do is just remove it from the agenda with your permission, and then when it's ready to come back to you, we'll put it on an agenda. So um, we, if, if we needed some more time to keep working with the uh, businesses, we'll have that time. And I do have one other question. Um, unless I miss this, what about the cash for gold stores? Does that affect those as well? This yes, ordinance? I, I think they're they're regulated by it, right? They would be regulated. Yes. By okay, because I didn't see that in the memo, and that's why I was quite, I didn't know I, what category they would. I come think under. that's a secondhand dealer under our ordinance. That would be, they come under? Mm -hmm, because they're buying uh, used uh, merchandise or secondhand merchandise. Okay, thank <clears> you. So. Uh, you would like a motion just to table and then you know, or just I, to remove I, it from the agenda? I would re remove it from the agenda, and that motion way we don't have it on the agenda repeatedly until right. it's ready to come back to you. I'll move to remove uh, Council Memo 499 12 from the agenda. I'll second that. Uh, just a um, quick comment. Um, I was at the meeting, and it got a little heated at the beginning, but, Chief, you handled it very well. I know you were starting to. Uh, Get a little edgy, but um, and there was some changes made uh, for the coin dealers, etc. So I had to leave because I had another deal. But uh, uh, in fact, I need to talk to you, see how it ended up, because I had to leave early. So 
Actually, uh, Mayor, we're close. I think the only thing left is our scrap dealers and uh, meeting with uh, both of their major scrap dealers uh, the first of the year. Okay. All right. Thank you. It's been motion and seconded to remove Council Memo 499-12 from the agenda. Councilman Fisher. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. <coughs> Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Mayor Durrani. Aye. Motion carried. Under resolutions, Council Memo 556-12, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a paratransit local share agreement with PACE and to apply for grant funds available under the Title 20 of the Social Security Act. It is recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Any questions? <coughs> Kristen. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Councilman Fisher. Aye. Mayor Gerani. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 557-12, a resolution adopting and authorizing the execution of the 2013 Tri-County Auto Theft Unit Agreement. It is recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Krista. The motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Councilman Fisher. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Mayor Durrani. Aye. Motion carried. Approval of regular current bills. Council Memo 558-12, regular payroll for November 16th through November 29th, 2012, $3,280,317.64. <laughs> Treasurer's disbursements, November 2012, $11,831,793.19. <laughs> regular claims for November 2012, $3,173,077.29. It is recommended said regular payroll, treasurer's disbursements, and regular claims be approved. So moved. Second. <clears throat> it's in motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Councilman Fisher. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Mayor Durrani. Aye. Next, bids and contracts, award of contracts. Council Memo 559-12, approve annual contract for information technology support services. Council Memo 560-12, award a contract for a managed PC replacement program. Council Memo 561-12, purchase one E12 fire engine for the fire department. Council Memo 562-12, enter into a professional services agreement for a GPS AVL system for the roadways division vehicles. Council Memo 563-12, purchase taser devices. Council Memo 564-12, award a contract for the blended phosphate solution purchase 2013. Council Memo 565-12, award a contract for the manganese sulfate purchase 2013. Council Memo 566-12, award a contract for the 2013 sodium hypochlorite solution purchase. Council Memo 567-12, award a contract for the 2013 sodium permanganate solution purchase. Council Memo 568-12, Approved Public Utilities Electrical Maintenance Services Contract 2013. Council Memo 569-12, Approved Extension of the Optional 2013 Term for the Biosolids Disposal Contract. Council Memo 570-12, Award a Contract for the Jefferson Street Water Main Improvement Project 2012. And Council Memo 571-12, Purchase One Replacement Tornado Siren. It is recommended Council Memos 559-12 through 571-12 be approved. So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Councilman Fisher. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Mayor Durrani. Aye. Motion carried. Next, amendments, change orders, and payments. Council Memo 573 12, change order number one and payout number five and final for the 2012 <coughs> Streetscapes Crawley Avenue. Council Memo 574-12, change order number two for the 63 South Ottawa Street parking lot. <coughs> Council Memo 575-12, payment for emergency bypass connection at West Park Lift Station. Council Memo 576-12, approved change order number one and payment request number two for the Fall Creek Stone Creek Public Improvements Project 2012. Council Memo 577-12, approved change order number one and payment number 10 for the 2012 biosolids contract. Council Memo 578-12, approved payment number 21 and final for design services for the Transportation Center B08. Council Memo 579-12, approved payment of two vehicle purchases for the Tri-County Auto Theft Unit. It is recommended Council Memos 573-12 through 579-12 be approved. So moved. Second. 
been motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilwoman Barber. Aye. Councilman Fisher. Aye. Councilman Girl. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Odekirk. Aye. Mayor Girani. Aye. Motion carried. Next is mayor and council comments. <clears throat> I would first like to thank city staff, top to bottom citywide, for a <clears throat> really good year and the hard work they've put in, as well as my fe fellow council members and the mayor. And uh, let's get ready for the next year. And with that, I'll say Merry Christmas to, to all who might be viewing this and then take one private moment to say that uh, my son is 14. Today's his birthday. Yes, he's one of those Christmas babies, so sometimes he's got shorted on the gifts, right? <laughs> um, but he's the best son that a father can ask for, so I will say uh, happy birthday, Douglas. Happy birthday. John? You know, I too would like to thank all of our staff for the uh, hard work that they've put in this year. Uh, we've certainly had uh, uh, some challenges, and uh, we met them head on. Um, we, uh, we had a, a great, uh, we've got a, a good budget that we're going into 2013. Uh, with and we also recognize that there's probably some challenges ahead there, but uh, I think uh, we've got an excellent staff um, uh, from Tom Thanis on down, the police chief, the fire chief, and all of their staff, and uh, um, looking forward to working with them in 2013. And I also like to wish uh, everyone a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Uh, just Merry Christmas to everyone and um, Happy New Year and a special New Year's wish for uh, some of our staff members. Um, uh, for some big ball games, some football games coming up. Uh, to Mike Ulitz, Jim Trisna, and our city manager, Tom Thanis, their alma mater, Notre Dame. I typically don't say this, but uh, let's bring back a championship to uh, South Bend and, and have a good time if you're going to the game. And here's a, here's a big one, man. This, this might not happen again. Jim Haller, good luck to Northern Illinois University. And... Uh, <laughs> Corporation, Jeff Feynman. He's, he's a Jeff. double domer or what a, a triple. Yeah. You're a triple domer or Jeff whatever Hug. they call. You're a triple husky. And Councilman Hug. So uh, Northern Illinois, uh, uh, show them all that uh, you're, you're eligible and you're worth going down to uh, Miami for the Orange Bowl and uh, bring back a big victory to, to DeKalb. So uh, happy new year to everyone. Susie. I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a happy new year's also. Yeah, I'd just like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and a safe uh, holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I also would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I agree with the comments made by Councilman Hug and Councilman Girl. Um, thank you, city staff, for a good year. I think 2012 was a good year for the city of Joliet. I really think we're heading in the right direction, Mayor. And um, I believe 2013 will be even better. On a somber note, uh, we spoke earlier about what happened in Connecticut. I, I personally... I'd like to extend my condolences to the families of the people out there. And um, Chief Trafton, I, I, I was a police officer after Columbine, and I know the Joliet Police Department was very proactive. We immediately changed policy in the way we trained for these events. And I was wondering if, if you wouldn't mind speaking for a minute, if you could tell the public, uh, God forbid if something like that ever happened here in Joliet, how we're prepared as a police department to handle it. Thank you. Council, uh, this is something we've trained for for years. We continue to train on a uh, basically a, a monthly basis, semi-monthly basis. Uh, it's not like the old days if one of these events should happen where you surround a building and you call for a SWAT team. Uh, we realize that uh, lives are at stake, and our men and women of our department uh, take it very seriously. They're well trained. Um, I don't want to get into details of what we do, but we're very good. Uh, it's no longer a wait. Um, our, our people enter almost instantly. Uh, well trained uh, through the, I would have to thank the council and past councils, uh, we're very well equipped. We have uh, patrol rifles, we have ballistic shields, and uh, we constantly train. So uh, again, uh, I've been in constant contact with all the superintendents and all the schools, and uh, we've got good plans in place, and uh, we have great communication with our schools. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I too would like to echo the comments that were made here, and um, Connecticut is not mourning alone. I saw a billboard that said the nation mourns with you and I think it's, it's touched all of us in some manner or shape or form and it's the most horrific thing I've ever seen in all my days and it's just, it's just very sad and 
I can't even imagine how those folks are dealing with all this. On a different note, um, I'd like to say that uh, last Saturday before last, they, we had the Shop with a Cop program, and a lot, of, a lot of people turned out for that. But one individual in particular I'd like to mention, and his name is Jeff Farron. He is the manager of the Walmart out at 59, and uh, he's been there for three years, and he goes above and beyond the duty of a manager for a Walmart. He has worked with the police department, helping, raise, helping them to raise funds two weekends in advance. He gives gifts bag, gift bags to the kids at his own expense. He, and he helps them with FOP golf outings and uh, different funds for different charities and helps them throughout the year. And just this past weekend, he helped with Toys for Tots. So I thought he was someone that we should recognize. And um, Jeff Barron, thank you for all that you do, and Merry Christmas to you. And uh, I'd like to say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa to all our folks out there that are watching this evening, and a very happy, healthy New Year. Your Honor, I would just like to wish you and the members of the City Council and their families a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The City staff um, and the residents of the City, likewise. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, uh, thank our staff, headed up by City Manager Tom Thanis and his management team, who have assembled a great group of department heads and who have assembled a great group of employees who, who work day in and day out to, to uh, make this council proud and the staff proud to, to do their job and do their job well. Um, also, I would like to congratulate former councilman Warren Doris on his, uh, uh, the new church he, he built. Uh, some of us were over there Friday evening for the dedication and their open house and it was, it's a beautiful facility. It's, uh, it's a great addition and asset to the city of Joliet. And then on one further note, um, on January 2nd, uh, Councilman, uh, former Councilman Joe Shatina will be undergoing some surgery and uh, uh, ask that you keep him in your prayers. And uh, he's very optimistic. And I asked him, I says, can I mention his depth? Absolutely. So uh, like everyone that please remember Joe in your prayers and uh, everything will be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I want to start by thanking staff. Uh, we uh, had a little rough time sometimes this year, but uh, we got through it. Uh, we always do. Uh, we did it in the past, and we'll do it in the future. Um, we're too tough uh, not to. Uh, I want to wish staff, the employees, uh, Merry Christmas, and thank them for what they're doing with less. I mean, every department, uh, I don't care, everybody's shorthanded, but they're getting the job done. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> um, my condolences to the family and friends of what happened in Connecticut and to the first responders. I can't imagine what it'd be like to see that going into that school. So, thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned.